Thanks for um, the invitation to speak. Um, I'm a pharmacist by background. I've got a history of community pharmacy, primary care, general practice pharmacy. Um, I've also worked in clinical commissioning, and I now work um, in a consultancy role at the interface between the pharmaceutical industry and the NHS. But my interest in spinal cerebrospinal fluid leaks and intracranial hypertension comes about because five and a half years ago I was a patient who, who developed one of these, and since that I've done a lot of reading and a lot of um, uh, understanding about this condition. So um, obviously this is a POTS UK um, meeting. Um, so why CSF leaks? Um, well, we've heard today a lot about what POTS is, feel worse when upright, got headache, nausea, vomiting, brain fog, fatigue, and associated with heritable connective tissue disorders. And when you look at the list of symptoms that go with a CSF leak, it's exactly the same list. Um, and there are a, a number of patients who um, experience both. Um, as we know, as we've heard already today, uh, POTS is quite mysterious. There are a lot, many different types, um, many different treatments, um, many different etiologies. Whereas with a spinal CSF leak, that is understood a little bit more. So I put somewhat there because, you know, it's still not fully understood. But treatment, if it's, if it's found and if it's isolated, treatment can be really effective and you can completely recover. Um, as I have. Um, however, um, I've put that in there um, because obviously that connective tissue disorder thing, you can have both. Um, patients can have as many diseases as they damn well please and plenty of patients do have both. Um, and there are cases, and I've put Dr. Ian Carroll on there if you want to learn more about this because obviously I've only got a few minutes. Um, look up his YouTube talks. He talks about an hour and a half about um, the overlap with these and he goes looking for patients in POTS clinics, finds CSF leaks, treats the CSF leak and the POTS goes away. So it is something to, um, I've cheated a bit, I only had three slides but I've put quite a lot of information here. So what is a spinal CSF leak? Well it's um, a hole in the dura mater in the, um, somewhere in the spinal area and cerebrospinal fluid leaks out and when the patient is upright the brain sags inside the skull, causing um, a variety of symptoms, um, brain sag, loss of fluid from around the brain, and various symptoms that go with a reduction in CSF. Um, lots and lots of different reasons, iatrogenic, lumbar puncture, anything that puts a needle or a scalpel near the spine can cause one. Um, people are told that lumbar puncture, postural puncture headaches should only last for about one to two weeks, but it they can be much, much longer than that, especially with um, connective tissue disorder patients. Um, traumatic, any kind of injury, um, lots of um, whiplash type injuries, people falling, sports injuries can cause them. Other anatomical abnormalities, anything that's poking through the dura, so calcified discs, bone spurs, and then any, any kind of other um, abnormality in the connective tissue itself, meningeal diverticular perineural cysts and CSF venous fistulas and then also spontaneous if you've got weak and fragile connective tissues they can just rupture randomly and that's I think what happened in my case so um, anything that looks like something that's quite innocuous like coughing sneezing vomiting lifting positional chains roller coaster rides um, and there is even a, a, a case report of a Pilates reformer somebody doing quite intense exercise um, and obviously, as I've mentioned, pre-existing dural weakness. Um, and I've also put on there as an alternative name, because I think um, CSF leak, it's just, what is it? You know, it doesn't sound very serious, and it's often managed in outpatients, but when you get one, you know, it, it's really, really life-changing illness. I had to lie down, basically, for three and a half months. Um, so I've put there as an, an alternative, just food for thought, a perforated dura mater, because that's actually what it is, and I think perforated sounds a bit more serious than just a CSF leak. Um, so the symptoms that go with it, um, loads and loads of symptoms. Um, obviously, a really severe headache um, that's positional, gets worse when you're upright, um, and then nausea, vomiting, uh, neck stiffness, um, seizures, tremor, um, 
hearing changes. People describe that it sounds like you get heads underwater. That was that was my experience as well. And then I've put a few of the symptoms around the edge there, um, which are ones that I experienced. Um, I think brain fog is a bit simplistic in, in its term for this because it is actually properly impaired cognition and memory damage that persists way beyond after the CSF leak has healed. Um, and so diagnosis, um, obviously it takes a careful history. Um, some of those things that seem very innocuous, sneezing, vomiting, you know, and then developing a headache that floors you seems a bit bizarre, but that is really important to listen to the patient and take a careful history. Um, medical procedures and traumas, you know, it could, could have been a long time ago. There are patients who've had an epidural spinal anesthesia and their baby's six months old and they've still got a CSF leak. So it is really important to consider how long ago the symptoms have started. Um, obviously, heritable connective tissue disorders, any other known spinal problems, previous history of POTS, because obviously there's this huge overlap. Um, Physical signs, um, I'm obviously not a doctor, so I, I guess this would be more where a diagnostician would be looking. But um, there are other um, clinical mimics. Um, some people with dementia um, have actually been found to have a CSF leak, or, or dementia diagnosis, should I say, and a CSF leak that's been treated and the, and the um, dementia has subsided. Um, Parkinsonian-type symptoms are also other movement disorders. And then um, seizures... Some people have quite severe other symptoms. Um, it can even progress to coma and death. Um, lumbar, so the diagnostics, I've put lumbar puncture is not required. I think the number is a, roughly 60% of lumbar punctures are normal. They're not a low pressure. Um, but there's various other types of brain imaging um, and spinal imaging. I won't go into that in detail, but just to say that none of it is um, very conclusive. It can all be um, a bit wishy-washy. A, a lot of people are told there's no leak on the imaging, therefore you don't have one, but actually I think it's quite a high proportion don't show up on imaging anyway. So in terms of management, um, Conservative would be bed rest, horizontal, Trendelenburg with the head down, which is really quite uncomfortable. You can do that obviously with a hospital bed, less easy when you're at home. Um, fluids, um, caffeine is supposed to increase um, cerebrospinal fluid production. Um, some people use it orally via tea and coffee or Pro Plus tablets and, and occasionally some centres use IV. That's more for the pain as opposed to it's not going to obviously heal the leak. Um, and I've put there an abdominal binder. That is in some of the literature. Obviously, if you're squeezing the abdomen, you're going to push the fluid back up to the brain. But also, logically, it might also act like a bandage, sort of squeezing the spine to allow the, the, the tissues to knit back together again. And I've put there nutrition to optimize healing. That was my approach that I took. Um, I developed a hypothesis to... Um, try and improve the integrity of my connective tissues with a nutritional approach and thankfully it worked. Um, in terms of the medical and surgical um, approach, obviously there's pain and nausea management. There are obviously no drugs that will heal a CSF leak but you've kind of used the medication to manage symptoms. The main way of treating it is with an epidural blood patch and I've put in there multiple because again there is this myth that there's a perception that one patch should fix it but many patients need many multiple patching. Um, there's also the epidural blood patch with fibrin sealant but in order to do that you have to know where the leak is because you've got to go in and place the sealant actually on the leak and then also there's the option for surgical repair but obviously it's only going to be very specialised neurosurgeons who are going to be um, doing those surgeries. So thank you.